And before we begin, I want us to pray and then straight away get into the message for this time. Let's pray. Everlasting Father, we thank you because you love us. Even amid these difficult times, we know that you are still there for us. As we share this message this evening, we ask you to bless us, to guide us, and to help us to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Be with us as we start to the end. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Now, friends, we know that uh, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ grew up in a place called Nazareth. And when Jesus Christ began his public ministry, he met a number of people who later became his followers, his disciples, as you may call it. Now, there is this day Jesus met a man named Philip. And Philip knew that he had met the Messiah whom the prophets had spoken about. And having known that Jesus is the Messiah, Philip went to encourage others and to bring them unto the Messiah whom he had met. So Philip one day went to a man whom the Bible calls Nathanael and told him that he had met the Messiah. We shall read the book of John chapter 1, verse 45 and 46, which says, Philip finds Nathanael and said unto him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip said unto him, Come and see. So Philip told Nathanael, I have found the Messiah. And this Messiah is called Jesus of Nazareth, and he is the son of Joseph. But Nathanael was surprised, and he asked the question, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip did not say yes or no, he just told him, Come and see. This is interesting. <clears throat> what was this in Nazareth that it was not expected for a good person to come from there? How were the conditions in Nazareth that Nathanael is wondering whether the Messiah, a good man, can come out of this place? Come with me and we shall find out. I found this about Nazareth from the book Desire of Ages, page 71. And the pen of inspiration says, the inhabitants of Nazareth were proverbial for their wickedness. The inhabitants of Nazareth were proverbial for their wickedness. The inhabitants of Nazareth were bad people, most of them. Nazareth was known to be a place where bad people lived. You could not expect to find a good person in this place. I hope we are together, brothers and sisters. Nazareth, Haikwa place poor. This was not a place where you find good people. Nazareth was a place where you find bad people, wicked people. The Messiah could not come from such a place, Nathanael thought. thought. So when, when, when Nathanael is asking, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? It shows that Nazareth, was not such a good place to come from. So, is it possible for a good person to be found in a bad place? Is it possible to find righteous people in a wicked place? Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? That is the question. Apparently, something good can come out of this Nazareth. Now, there is another man I want us to consider in the Bible, and his name is Lot. And this Lot, you know the story, I believe, was a close associate of Abraham. 
But the time came when they had to part. And the Lot went to live in Sodom or near Sodom. What do you know of Sodom from the Bible? A good place? A bad place? <laughs> you know the answer. Sodom was not a good place. But Lot went to dwell with the inhabitants of Sodom. We are going to read 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 7 and 8, and I'm reading from the King James Version. This is what the Bible says concerning Lot in Sodom, a man of God in a wicked place. This is what the Bible says. And delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked, for that righteous man dwelling among them, in seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with, his, with their unlawful deeds. I think we are reading the verse together. This verse is talking about how the Lord God delivered the Lord from Sodom and the surrounding areas which were wicked. God delivered Lot, whom the Bible says was a just Lot, a righteous man in Sodom. A righteous man in Sodom. Can a righteous man be found in Sodom? <laughs> Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? <laughs> Apparently, a good thing can come from a bad place. But there is one thing in these verses that I find very interesting. Lot was not enjoying his stay in Sodom. The Bible says he was constantly tortured for dwelling with the wicked. His soul witnessed the wickedness of the wicked and every day he was tortured by their unlawful deeds. Friends, Jesus Christ was not enjoying to stay in Nazareth because Nazareth was a wicked place and Jesus was a righteous person. The same way Lot did not enjoy to stay in Sodom because he was a righteous man. Friends, we are like Jesus and we are like Lot. We, the children of God, are like Jesus in Nazareth, or like Lot in Sodom. Are we enjoying our stay in this world? <laughs> Jesus said, in this world you'll have tribulation, but be of good cheer because I have overcome the world. We will never enjoy fully staying in this world because it's a wicked place. Jesus came from Nazareth, but he was not enjoying his stay there because Nazareth was a wicked place. The same way, Lot did not enjoy his stay in Sodom because Sodom was a wicked place. We cannot fully enjoy staying in this world because it is a wicked place. We shall meet trouble, we shall meet temptation, and without the Lord, we shall be overcome. But if we stay with the Lord, then definitely we shall overcome. Now, friends, I want us to ask ourselves a question. How can we live righteously in the midst of unrighteousness? How can we be like Jesus in Nazareth? How can we be like Lot in Sodom? Righteous, but staying in an unrighteous place in the midst of unrighteous people. How can we? I have about four ways which we can use to overcome. Probably there are more, but I want to share four. In this of unrighteousness. First, hmm? Everything starts in the mind, they say. 
if you put something in your mind, it will be easy for you to overcome. There is a verse that we usually read in our, in our churches and in our congregations, which I find very interesting, and that is Daniel chapter 1, verse 8. The Bible says, But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. It starts in the mind. Daniel purposed in his heart. By the way, when the Bible is saying heart, it doesn't mean the heart which, which, which beats blood. It means the mind. Daniel purposed in his heart, in his mind, that he will not defile himself. He purposed in his heart that he would follow the Lord. So we have to start by purposing. We have to set our mind in an attitude that will not dishonor the Lord. If we do so, you will find out that it will be easy for you to overcome. Apart from Daniel, there is another example. We have Joseph. You know the story. Joseph lived in Egypt in the midst of a wicked people, serving a master whose wife was a wicked woman. But because Joseph had set his mind, he could not do such a thing. Genesis 39 verse 9, Joseph said, How can I do such a thing? If we set our minds to do the right thing, then we will not easily do the wrong thing. So for us to live righteously in the midst of unrighteous people, we have to set our minds that we will honor the Lord no matter what. Number two, how can we live rightly in the midst of unrighteous people? There is this verse that we usually read during relationships. Hmm? relationships, <laughs> especially this verse 14. Second Corinthians chapter 6, we shall read from verse 14 to verse 17. The Bible says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord has Christ with Belial? Or what part has he that, be that believes with an infidel? continues to say, and what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God, as God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. There is, a, there is an association we are not supposed to have with the wicked. Of course, we should not distance ourselves from them, because remember, we have to preach unto them. But there is a level beyond which we are not supposed to go. Our association with the wicked should have limits, serious limits. So we have to shun evil. We have to accept that we should not compromise with evildoers. You we cannot be yoked together with the unbelievers. Jesus Christ distanced himself from the unrighteousness of Nazareth. I am sure Lot distanced himself from the unrighteousness of Sodom. So we have to do the same. These verses have not read. Verse 17 and verse 18 says this. Listen to verse 17. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. So we have to put a line between us and the wicked. First, I said, we have to develop an attitude in our mind that will keep us from sin. Number two, we have to put a line. We have to put a line between us and the unrighteous. Kuna usiano, Haufai kuwa kati yetu na wenye dhambi. 
Tunafaa tuweke mustari. We should put that line and it should be very clear. Number three, how shall we live rightly? How can we overcome and live rightly in the midst of unrighteousness? We have to stay busy to limit temptations. Hmm? We have to be busy, not idle. We have to be busy to limit temptations. You remember the English people say, an idle mind is the devil's workshop. You've heard that. So we have to be busy to limit temptations. And we should be busy doing good things, not bad things. There is a verse which says, we should overcome evil with good. If we do good things always, we will not do bad things. So we should be busy doing good things. There is an example we should follow here. Desire, Desire of Ages, page 71, I got this quote, which I think is very important. Concerning Jesus Christ, it is written, in his industrious life, there were no idle moments to invite temptation. No aimless hours opened the way for corrupt associations. So far as possible, he closed the door to the tempter. <laughs> Jesus Christ was so busy, there was no time the devil could get him. And we can do that too. We can be too busy for the devil, by the way. We can be so busy, mpaka shetani hawezi tupata. If you are idle, the devil will easily get you. But if you are busy doing good things, temptation will not easily get you. So as we live in the midst of unrighteousness, we have to be busy people. Doing this, doing that, doing good things. And if we do so, we shall close the avenue for the tempter. Number four, which is the last one for this time. How can we live rightly? Friends, we have to pray always to overcome. Lazima tuombe kila wakati. We have to pray all the time. Huh? We cannot take a break from prayer. For if we do so, we shall be destroyed. There is no safety without prayers. You've known that. So for us to be safe, we have to pray. Not praying with breaks, <laughs> but praying without ceasing. You've heard this verse. You've heard this verse, haven't you? That is 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17, which says, pray without ceasing. What does that mean? <laughs> Praying without ceasing. Yani kuomba bila kuacha. We should pray without ceasing. We are living in a battlefield. We cannot take a break. For the devil takes no breaks. So for us to overcome and to live rightly in the midst of unrighteousness, we have to pray constantly. We have to pray without ceasing. This quote you've heard, Great Controversy, page C530. It is written, No man is safe for a day or an hour without prayer. So for us to overcome, we have to pray. If we pray, then we boost our chances of overcoming the devil. Friends, God is an expert in saving people from temptation. God is an expert in saving people from temptation. If we dwell with the Lord, then we shall overcome. Hallelujah. If we dwell with Jesus, we shall be conquerors. Indeed, even more than conquerors. For the victory of Jesus becomes our victory when we are in Christ and when Christ is in us. Friends, we begin by saying this. Jesus Christ lived a righteous life in the midst of unrighteous people. And the Lord lived a righteous life 
in the midst of unrighteous people. And the question is, can we do the same? The answer is yes. If they did it, we can do it, especially Jesus. We are told that he is our example in all things. He came from a bad place, Nazareth, a wicked place as we read from Desire of Ages, page 71. But he was able to live without sin. The Bible says he was tempted in all points like us, but without sin. And he becomes our example in all these things. Friends, we can overcome. We are living in a world that is getting wicked day in, day out. And as you can see, many plagues will come from the Lord. We shall have diseases, we shall have earthquakes, we shall have other natural disasters because of wickedness. But as God's people, we cannot afford to let our God down. The last verse for today is 2 Peter, the verse that was, was just below what we read, 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, this is Peter talking about the deliverance of Lot from Sodom. In verse 9 he says, The Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve them just unto the day of judgment to be punished. And God knows how to save you. God knows how to save you when you are living in the worst estate in Nairobi. God knows how to save you when you are living in the most wicked city of the world. If you remain with Jesus, you can overcome. For God knows how Anajua Bile Anafanya. He knows how he delivers people out of temptation. So if we remain with him, we have no excuse and we shall not fail for he knows how to save us out of temptation. Friend, let us remain with Christ and we shall overcome. Thank you for listening to this presentation. I hope it was a blessing to you, even as it was unto me. And my prayer is that may God help us to overcome even as Jesus overcame and lived a righteous life. May God bless you. Let us believe and pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this evening. You have spoken unto us from your word, and you have given us encouragement that we can overcome. There are many temptations and many challenges, but we know that if we remain with you and you in us, then we shall overcome and indeed be more than conquerors. May you bless my brothers and sisters who listen unto this presentation. Wherever they are, O oh Lord, may you bless them. Even as we live in the midst of our unrighteousness, may you set us to be a light unto the world. Father, forgive us our sins, revive us again, and help us to walk with you even as you have called us. May you guide us now and forevermore. And when you come to your kingdom, may you remember us in the good life. Let your will be done, for we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, brothers and sisters.